Let's look at a recent feature YouTube introduced, which is chapters in your videos and how while editing, you can automatically create those in your video editor. Many of you may know this already. In a YouTube video now, you can place chapter markets below in your description and they'll show up down at the bottom of the video so the person watching can skip over things or come back and find something that is interesting to them. I recently worked on a really long video. It was about 30 minutes long. It was about YouTube comments and it had a ton of chapter markers in it. It was a real pain and I realized there's gotta be a way to automate this and I found there was at least in Premiere Pro and I hope your editor can do this too. Let me show you this. Here we are in Premiere Pro. This is just the way I have my stuff set up. Yours may not be the same and that's okay because what I'm gonna show you you should be able to figure out. Now, I went through and created all these markers in here, and yeah, that gets to be kind of a pain, but here's what I did. I went through, and every one of these that are labeled, like this one, you'll see right there, there's a marker. Do, 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 there's a marker. There's the next marker. Now, something about markers you should know in Premiere Pro, if I hit Shift M, it takes me to the next marker. And if I hit Control Shift M, it backs me up through all the markers. So how do you wanna do this? You're gonna go in here and you're gonna create a marker. For instance, if I press M, I get a marker. Well, that is not great. If I press MM, I get this window that pops up, not on the right screen right there. And you can put your the name of the marker in here and you can make comments, you can make them colored, and you can do all sorts of stuff. I'm thinking no. Here's what you do is you open the markers right there. The markers panel will pop up in the bottom left. And let's take a look what's in there. Oh, look at that. Now there's an interesting thing about these markers that you should know. If you go down to the timeline, all the markers disappear. What's going on there? The reason why all these markers disappear is because you're looking at the timeline. You can have markers on the timeline. You can have markers for the video. You can have markers for all this audio stuff. You can have markers all over the place. Look at this timeline. You can have markers all over for each one of these things. What Premiere Pro is looking at is this, the program window or the window you preview when you play. So when I click and activate that window, you'll see the blue line come around it. Boom, look at that. All the markers show up. So this marker down here, watch up here above this thing right here when I press M to put a marker here. Boom, there it is. You see that marker up here? So when I click up here, it put that marker in there. Let's undo that. Boom. So I go through and I mark all these things. I just go through and willy nilly um, hit where the beginnings are and everything else. Like for instance, I could put a marker here. Uh, something's there, something's there, and something's there. Okay, good. Let's click up here. So let's go Control Shift M to the first marker I put. Look at that. I can put in here test marker one. Test the marker one. Anyway, I can keep doing that and do and, and putting these markers in. Uh, so let's just undo all this. Badoom, badoom, badoom. Good. So that's what happens is you go in here and you add all these markers and you add in its name right here. Like, oh, look at there. Content of video. Content of video. That's the name of the marker. That is the comment. I just copy and pasted them because I was playing around trying to figure out how this whole thing works and how I could show you how this works so it'll save you a bunch of time. Okay, let's continue. So if you look at the marker, there it is. Boom, boom. Content of videos, content of video. And then you name them all. Like go through and put, just go through and go, okay, I got a, a chapter marker here and a chapter marker here and a chapter marker here. And when you're all done doing that, then you just come up here and you open the markers window and you just name these right there. Cool, cool. Let's undo that. One, two, three. Okay, so here's the really cool thing. I went, well, you know, I'm creating all these markers in here. That's cool. How do I get them? out of Premiere Pro. And I found, if you pull down the file menu and you look under export, you have markers. How about that? Now, when you go to do markers, you can do them as a comma separated values, like a CSV. That way you can import them into Excel and manipulate them and stuff, or you can do a text file. Let me show you just a text file. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it on the desktop and we're gonna call it text file. Isn't that cool? 
Now, when you open this text file, here's what you get. So I wanted to show you the text file because it's very interesting. If you look at the text file, you'll see the asset name. It's just over and over and over. You'll see these little in points where the marker's at, and then you'll see this. Beginning, introduction, disclaimer. Hey, that's missing one. Well, if you go to 3809 in here, you'll notice over here, it's picking up, not picking up the name of the marker. It's picking up the description. Huzzah. Let's see what you get when you export this to a CSV or a comma separated value file. Let's do that. Again, export, markers. Let's do this to a Hey, I didn't see that before, a web page. How about that? That's pretty cool. Didn't know you could do that. We're going to check that out. Let's export this to a comma separated values file, which will open in Excel. Let's call this test file Excel and save that to the desktop. Now look at this. Boop. Boop. Here we get the marker name. Here we get the description. That's basically the comments area. So I suggest you just put your markers in the comments, like over there, put them in the comments over in Premiere Pro, just use this. A, it's bigger than this little dude, and B, it comes out on the text file and it comes out on the Excel file, and that's cool. Okay, we're not gonna save that, and we're gonna flush that out. I'm gonna do this in super light speed so you don't have to sit here and watch me type, which I'm not really good at, so let's do that. Okay, so now you notice down over here that I got all these comments that right here in the, uh, the name, I, I got all the comments copied over so I can show you this. There's all the markers. Shift M goes forward. There's the next marker. Shift M, agenda for YouTubers. Control Shift M, agenda for haters, blah, 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 and it goes over. Now also important, so YouTube will pick this up, is the fact that at the very beginning, you need to start with, boom, this First, very, very, very first comment. You can call it beginning, you can call it whatever you want, but it has to be at zero, 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 zero. Cool, so now I got all my markers in here. Now, when I export this thing, now when I export the markers again, this time we're gonna do this as a text file so you can see what's going on. We're gonna call this, boom, Makas 2 so I can show you. It's exported. Let's open up this text file. Now you'll notice there's Markers 2, that's the name of the file name that you exported it as. There's the endpoint, there's all the descriptions. Now, I did this test on YouTube to find out what it would take and it wouldn't take. And here's what I learned. I learned that most of the time you put markers in like this in YouTube. You go at 0, 31 seconds, my marker is called hello. And you get to like 1, 21, that's a minute and 21 seconds and it's next one. And then you get to one hour and 23 minutes and 59 seconds and you type in wow. You see that? Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Right there. That's normally how you'd put these markers in here. So I was like, I wonder if I could just export this, these points. This is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Right here is frames. I wonder if I could just export that over into and copy and paste this thing into YouTube and it will work. And here's what I found. It will definitely take hours, minutes, seconds, but it won't recognize frames. And that's cool. So really you could do something like this. Hours with the double zeros, minutes, seconds. Same there, right? Hours, minutes, seconds. And this is gonna be one hour, minute, second. So leading zeros on these are okay. It will do this, but these little frames back here, it just, it just blows its mind. It just goes, I don't know what to do with this. There's too many numbers and you need to take these off. If you're doing a text file, um, really all you need to do is to get rid of this. Well, in my text file editor, I simply see, I copy that to the clipboard and I do eight. And I'm doing a replace. So it's gonna take anything that is markers two with all this, tab, 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 spaces and I'm gonna replace it with nothing, which means those are all gonna go away. Watch this. Boom! Now they're all gone, but I don't need this stuff up here, but that's okay. So well, now I got everything I need right here. Now you can go in and write a script for this. You can go in and lob off these frames like this. Boom, boom, 
boom. However you want to do it, that's fine. That's how you would do it in a text thing. The other thing you could do is if you don't like these big long things, because all you have is these big long spaces and everything in here, you can do the same thing. You can copy that to the clipboard. You can do a find and replace, replace it with, let's say one space. Boom, look at that. And there we go, we got it all. So you want to make sure to take that off and you just go through and you can manually lob these little dudes off, the frames off and go through the file and do that. Trust me, it's a lot easier than going through and marking down what frame it's at in your video and writing it down and going over to YouTube and going over to the description and typing all this stuff in. It's just like, it'll make you crazy. That's the easy way to do it. The other thing is, is you can bring it into Word or whatever your text editor is and do some little thing that goes through and finds the end and lobs it off. I did that for me in Excel and it was really good. Now let's export the markers as, boom, a common separated values file. It says right there. I was stumbling, okay? We're gonna do test two Excel. Boom, done. Let's open that guy in Excel. Now I have the same type of thing except in Excel, it not only takes the marker name, but also the description. Right click, let's delete that row. In, I don't care about the out point, delete that row. I don't care about the duration, I don't care about anything. And we're gonna delete all those. So basically now I have the marker name and this. So the way this is formatted in YouTube, as I just showed you, is it has the description, then it has, it has the, like the marker name, and then it has the endpoint. Well, I'm gonna give you a little thing here. You pay attention if you use Excel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, this cell is gonna equal the midpoint of this, the text is going to be this. The start num is going to be one. I believe it's eight. So we're going to start text here. We're going to start at one and we're going to grab up to eight characters and we'll test that out. Boom, look at that. So what it's done is it's lobbed this off. Let's test this on the next cell. Boom, that's right. I want 12 seconds. I want 23 seconds. Now normally I would copy and paste this all down and everything else, but I want to show you this. So now I'm going to say what I want to do is I just want to put all this back together. I'm going to take that. I'm going to append to that time that we fix a space. I'm going to append to that the name of the marker. I'm going to close that little print and hit enter. Yes, accept the correction. Look at that. Now, if I grab all these and I just paste them down, I go, boom, look at that. And there's all my markers. I can simply copy all these and I can go over to YouTube. I'll just do it in this uh, notepad here. Shweek, and paste them all in. Look at that. Those are all your markers. You just grab all these suckers. You just come back over to your here and you just grab this stuff. Let's pretend those aren't in there. I just call it chapters. You don't need chapters. Boom, paste, there they all are. All the way down there and you just saved yourself a tons of time. Now, it usually takes sometimes a minute or so for YouTube. I found it pretty instantaneous. And when you go over here and you click on your video, when people come over here, they'll see all these markers. So I can go over here and go, hey, I wanna see this thing about link dumping, boom. And it takes me there, look at that. They can also go down here into the description and let's go into, you don't know anyone, boom, like that. Isn't that cool? It takes a little like rearranging in your brain how to do this. Trust me, I went through when I first had markers and I went through the video that I uploaded or on Premiere Pro and I was like, okay, I wanna mark, get one there. I wanna get something here and then I'd be writing down the number and where they are. That's fine if you're doing one or two or three markers, but if you're doing a bunch of markers like I have, the process is simple. One, put markers into your timeline. Two, label them in the description comments area. Three, export it as a text file or as an Excel file. Four, do a little munging that you wanna do. And then five, copy and paste them into your video. And then you get all this cool stuff. You get the markers, you get all this cool stuff and everything else. Isn't that cool? Now, one thing I didn't show you is exporting this to HTML, to a web page. Let's go over and take a look and see what that does. Now, you may run into this thing where you pull on the file menu like export. Oh, I can't export my markers, what's going on? Remember, look at your focus. If I'm over here on the toolbar, it's not gonna let you export your toolbar. I always suggest going to the program window because you can see what's going on here. Cool, cool. Let's export these markers. And this time, let's choose a web page HTML and we'll call this test web page markers. Boom. This is what it gave me. 
It gave me test web page markers, and then it gave me images. Look at all this. It gave me all the thumbnails in the video where this thing's at. Let's go back here and open this and see what we get. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So I not only got all the markers and everything else, we don't care about description. Here's the marker name. Here's the description all the way down. Here's the in point. Here's the out point. Here's the duration. Anywhere in the video on these, like right here, that's starting on my pan in and move out thing. So you'll notice like this marker here, shift M, you notice it, there's nothing there. It's black. People change because that's coming in. So that's what you're gonna see here. But if you don't have that type of stuff going on, it'll show you all the little thumbnails over here on wh what's happening at this thing, which is kind of cool. I wouldn't suggest taking this and trying to do anything fancy with it. Although, if you know some web, JavaScript, blah, blah, blah stuff that you can do to that, we'll go ahead. Now, it may seem like a lot of work to do this, but you can go through and develop your own process from your own editor. For instance, I've developed it so where I can export these things and I have scripts that I've created in Excel and Word that just go through and do all that work for me. So the process is simply make sure I put chapter markers into my video as I'm creating it as I go along export those, run it through my scripts, paste them into my YouTube description, and voila, I got all the goods. Don't forget I got free courses over at Basic Filmmaker University, so go check them out. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I apologize. I forget to keep doing this. I have a join button where people have been kind enough to help support the channel, and I keep forgetting to put them up and say, huzzah, I, I put them in the description below, but I should put their names up here. So all you dudes over there, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate it. Spent a lot of time to create these courses and I think I'm entitled to some love. Okay, I'm going to stop uh, doing this now. Okay, in this video, huh, wonder if the audio's on. Hello, hello. <laughs> Things you should check before you hit the record button. You're probably wondering why I'm in here, not in the regular studio. Funny story, I was hanging some blackout curtains over there and over there and getting rid of these stupid paper blackout shades, and I fell off a ladder and I hurt my foot. So I'm just sitting here um, doing this instead of standing up what I'm doing. I pretty much forgot what I was going to say. Like I did a whole mental ram dump all of a sudden. Now I just, I don't even know what my name is anymore. Just call me Fred. See, I'm like the big YouTubers. I have shots of coffee and I like show coffee and stuff. So always makes me wonder if YouTube would flag a video like it would see these words or when it hears this. Maybe you didn't notice that cool little bug down there. You see it? It's like kind of moving a little bit back and forth and stuff. Just wait till you see what I got planned for my channel. Look who decided to visit me. It's Film Cat. Say hello. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. He wasn't going for that crap at all. Oh, I want to jump up on your lap. No! It seems like a little bit of... It seems like it could be a lot of work, but if you... It seems like it can be a lot of work, but if you go through and it seems like it can be a lot of work, but if you go through and you create, apparently it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> Let's try that again. Now it may seem a lot of work. <laughs>